You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for joining us today. We are really, really excited to be hanging out here with you and uh, to know that there's potentially a few of you out there that are going to listen to us and listen to this show. And we hope those that do that you learn something and uh, even perhaps more. Well, not more equivalent. It might spur you to send in your own question. We really want to hear from you at askdroneyou.com. Also, thank you to everyone who is a member and pays $57 a month for over three dozen classes. It's almost four dozen now. Um, to be able to learn how to use drones technically or creatively to make money in a vast number of industries. It's the largest library of drone-based courses and it's available to you for $57 a month. Honestly, a lot of colleges use our stuff for curriculum, so you could save yourself, I don't know, $100,000 and just take it direct from us, <laughs> the DroneU.com. All right, let's hear that question. Hey, Rob and Paul. My name's Ryan. I'm a land surveyor up in Montana, and we have a Senate Bill 333 that's proposed to limit the flight height of 200 feet so we would have to be limited to fly above 200 feet in Montana if the Senate bill passes. If not, you are subject to a $500 fee for criminal trespass over private property without permission. So I was curious what your thoughts were on that. I thought we were kind of covered by the FAA regulating airspace over private land if you take off from an allowed spot but I'm not an expert, so I was curious on your opinion. Thanks for your time. You guys do great work. See ya. Thank you, Ryan. Really, really appreciate it, and I think it's super cool that a land surveyor is reaching out. Um, glad Thank to hear you. That, glad to hear that you're listening and hopefully getting some nuggets here and there. But, uh, man, is this issue ever going to go away? N you know what? I am always and forever going to blame the North Carolina Department of Transportation because they completely defied the FAA, came up with their own rules, registration system, licensing system, and it took almost eight years and then boom, shut down by the federal government. Okay. We saw the same thing happen in Massachusetts, in Newtown, Massachusetts. Okay. And then now the state of Washington is like, you need to register your drone with us. There are other states that are implementing these like drone registries too. And again, check out the drone advocate advocacy kit so that you can take it to your local senators and um, educate them. I have found that many congressmen, congresswomen, senators don't do their research. The FAA is the only controlling body of the airspace. Look, Montana, what happened to John Dutton for governor? Okay. John Dutton would not let this pass. Why? Because he understands that uh, ranches need drones to be the most efficient operations possible, locate their cattle, know when they're pregnant, be able to much more efficiently capitalize on it, etc. But I digress. Um, unfortunately, while I do love the state of Montana, they do not have the authority to regulate the airspace below 200 feet. Only the FAA can do that. Um, I understand. I think I understand without reading the bill. I could make an assumption as to why they might be doing this. Um, there might be ranchers who are having drones flown by PETA, you know, over their ranches and trying to sue them for stuff and whatnot. In all honesty, there are much better solutions to that. Do you remember the story that we did with Anthony Cools where we taught him to fly like super well and he kamikaze his neighbor's drone out of the air and the FAA wouldn't do anything because it was an airborne accident? <laughs> There's your formula. <laughs> AskDroneU.com, baby. <laughs> the bottom line is it's such a frustrating scenario because, you know, obviously the state, whether it's Montana or any other state that chooses to go down this road, they have the resources mm -hmm. to go after people if they want to. Yeah. And so then a person like Ryan here, just hypothetically, I'm not saying this would be you, but that chooses to say, no, that's not actually what the federal law says. And we have the opportunity to fly in spite of because of X. Well, you still have 
problems on your hand. True. You can't just say that and they're going, oh, okay, well, in, ca- in that case, it's still an issue. And and that's very frustrating. And so I just, I don't know. And, and we're, you know, I'm definitely kind of a state's rights person, but at the same time, that is not the realm that this particular issue falls in. Yeah. And that's, that's I feel like one of the main arguments against state's rights, which in most instances, I would agree with you on state's rights. Um, but this is also one of the few things of like why the FAA does exist is because having a patchwork of airspace rules. Th- I mean, like this is how, you know, whoever, whatever Montana Senator brought this up is, is not doing their research dumber than rocks or has myopia worse than many Them engineers. Boots is too tight. Mm-hmm. That said, if there was a patchwork of airspace rules, gosh, could you imagine going through the airport and it being even more difficult than it is today? Like, there is a reason JSX is is exponentially growing because a joyfully simple experience is all it takes to get from point A to point B. True. So, yeah. With but, that said, uh, a patchwork of regulation would not work out well. Even though a lot of states are efforting in that direction. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, Texas has enough votes to secede from the union right now and the White House is just ignoring it. So states' rights might become a very prominent political issue uh, in the future. It's just that... I'm one of those people where I'm like extremes on both ends of the spectrum is not good. That's all I'm going to say. Well, and I'm curious about why 200 feet. Like what is the magic? It's probably for like delivery or something. Probably. To, to allow for delivery? Well, you know what? When I read just a s- snippet of the bill, I think it's actually for privacy. People probably don't want drones flying over their property. They have probably read the Cosby case, but they've read that there have been petitions on that case that have gone both ways. But the way that the FAA sees that case is a both and scenario that yes, you have rights to your airspace up to the quote unquote usable allotment, but that airspace is also a public domain and you cannot restrict access amongst a public domain. For many ranchers, think of a river river running through your property it's the exact same thing as a river so true yeah although if yellowstone tells us anything about that situation ranchers will do what they need to do to keep you off their river that's why i'm saying uh kamikaze drone so (laughs) (laughs) taylor sheridan i i can do that i did it for the ntsb i could do it for you so (laughs) wasn't the only three letter agency i did it for but all right i can't say anymore so that said um I greatly appreciate this question. Um, I think what this person needs to do is advocate. They need to go to the senator and say, look, I understand tactical empathy. I understand you're trying to create privacy for ranchers. That is important. The document that the FAA uses to explain airspace rights to people, we should we should update our uh, advocacy kit and include this uh, library. It is called uh, Who Owns the Sky? The Struggle to Control Airspace from the Wright Brothers on. It's the Quarterly Journal of Austrian Economics from 2010, volume 13, subvolume 4. So when you say they reference that, what do you mean? What are they... This is like literally if you were to go to the FAA's headquarters in D.C. and someone was to actually take the time to actually explain this to you, um, they would say, well, understand this is how we view airspace. And this is essentially like the founding document. Now, walking through the halls, you might also hear the chief FAA administrator say, I wish we would have never taken on the Perker case. But hey, who am I? So interesting. <laughs> so we don't have any like really great solutions or answers other than to, like you said, advocate, speak up. Yeah, 100 percent. Try to work work up support um, from fellow drone pilots and. That kind of thing. And understand this. Do it the right way, by the way. That's what I was just going to say is there are so many hotheads out there that hop on Twitter and try to berate public speakers, heads of state, etc. That's not going to get you anywhere. Okay. It's not going to get you anywhere whatsoever. Ryan doesn't seem like the type, by the way. I don't think so either. Uh, You get more bees with honey. Bees do not waste their time explaining to flies why you don't eat shit. Period. On that bombshell, my name is Paul. <laughs> and I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.